found out that these are my grandchildren and this is my great grandchildren a great great grandchild hey hey Shuna. hello ah so she's my great grandchild Who, who'd have known at 52 years old i'd be a great granddad but hey oh, such as i was invited to my niece's house now my niece is probably i don't know five or six years younger than me it's a bit of an unusual different kind of system here where um my cousin's children treat me or call me like an uncle so um i come to her village oh, it's a bit, look at that it's huge it sort of goes back the rooms are absolutely massive and these are with my grandchildren these are my grandchildren can you believe it that is Safwan otherwise known as Johnny that's Naha Nahia I can't get her name right Nahia and that's Nuha Nuha and that that young baby is part of this family so yeah it's just um it's just so peaceful here though so so the main road is probably about 300 yards away but you can't really hear anything because of the density of the trees and everything it is so so peaceful so quiet um, no noise just you know just lovely sort of mature trees there's fruit trees that you can see up here there's a papaya it's a papaya growing up there papaya so I've got um five different types of fruit as a snack um, I don't want anything I just said I'd have a cup of tea because you just have to have have something when you visit people but my god um, my trousers ain't gonna fit when I um when I get back on the plane anyway with my um I'm in my niece's village and this is my niece's child number three child yeah. number three so um Nam Kitabai my name is Abdullah al -Mamun. Yeah, so and um, what's the name of the village? Chaldubaragam. Chaldubaragam. Yeah. So um, it's so, like I said before, it is so peaceful, so quiet. There's no, you can't hear, the road's, like I said, three, four hundred yards away. But there's so many trees, it just stops noise coming here and it is just so peaceful. I told my niece that next time I'm coming, I'm staying here because it's so peaceful here. So yeah, see you later. Nasty looking spider, isn't it? Quite pretty. But yeah, look at that. It's got like an extra stitching on the web. You can see that dark white stitching. Fields and lots of greenery.
Wednesday. Um, I don't know what day it is. I was on this second, third. I think it might be the fifth of March. So yeah, still in the um, my dad village, my birth village, my village. Um, so this is going to be our last full day here. So me and my younger brother are planning to take some of the kids here um, to the local bazaar, the only bazaar, and buy them some toys. Um, I've been playing football with them. Um, but they've got a, like, it's one of those really soft pla plastic balls, it's not like a proper football which you know you kick and you, it doesn't really go far it floats about but it's really odd shaped and um, so I, I want to get the little boy a new football, a um, soft one um, and then there's Neha I think I've pronounced it right, and Neha so they're actual blood relatives even so they might be distant, they're still blood relatives, so we want to just take them shopping and buy them some toys. And then there's a little girl here called um, Ramuna. We want to take her shopping if we're allowed and get her some toys. And there's a bit of, um, there's sort of like some metal shacks behind where these brick houses are, um, just on over there. Um, and um, people sort of live there and there's a little girl who's just actually walked you know, that's somebody else some of the people are so sure who just having a quick glance you sort of mistake them for children um, so they apparently live here when the vision, well they apparently just live here and they look after the village well, because like I said before lots of people are abroad or elsewhere in, in, in Bangladesh so um, this this can be left empty, so they just keep an eye on it. They use the land. Obviously, there's lots of fruit trees, like the banana trees, absolutely everywhere. There's papayas. There's mango trees. There's um, I don't know what the what the English name for it, but it's either a jackfruit or some an, another fruit like a jackfruit, but it starts with D. Um, I can't I can't even picture the word in my head. Um, because you know me, I'll, I'll have a go at pronouncing it, e even though it'll come out wrong. Um, I've, I've seen some baby ones here, so, but I don't think you'll be able to see it because I don't have to zoom on this or anything like that. I mean, it's just my little GoPro that I use when I go swimming. Um, but I didn't want to just do a normal video like I normally do. I just wanted to re record this because, you know, I do definitely want to come back. I want to bring my wife, I want to bring my son. Um, but then they're not going to have a connection here like I do. Um, I'm just trying to find that fruit now. I said I saw a small one here. Now I can't see any. I thought it was on that tree, but um, maybe I made it up. Oh no, there it is. There it is. So now I'm just going to turn the camera around. You can just see um, little bits of like small fruit. So they're right in front there. I'm hoping you can see them. So um, what I remember about them is that they're really huge and they're really huge and heavy these fruits and you slice them open slightly prickly on the outside but not prickly as it pierces your skin it's just got like a ridged um, sort of outer skin and you open it inside and the actual flesh um, I don't really like it's really sweet when it's overripe um, like most of my fruit, I like my fruit to have a bit of sharpness to it, so I prefer it when it's a bit underripe. And then with the seeds inside, you can actually boil them and make and have them in a curry. So you, I remember having it with a fish curry. Um, but yeah, so last night um, our cousin um, Ahta arranged for his architect to come and see us. You know, um, Akta has been really really brilliant, really helped us out. We're going to go and see him tomorrow before we, we go off to Sile and um, just spend some time with him and his family before we go. But um, the architect came and just so we can look at what we can do with Dad's house. It's not like to make it um, make it like it's not about modernizing it to the extent that people can live on, in it 24 7. Obviously, people can by the things we want to do. But I think there's a definite idea here 
in Bangladesh they want buildings to look like the one behind me which I'd say is the, is the newest it's been extended itself but it's the newest kind of building here um, and personally even though it's really comfortable you know it's got lots of protection so people can't get in and all that kind of stuff that's not what I remember about Bangladesh my dad's house is like it's more far more traditional so they thought we would want something like this added to the back of my dad's house and we said no that's not what we want we want something that is basically like a mirror image of my dad's house so it just looks like it, it was just built all at the same time it's you know just a continuous same kind of design um, same height like the inside floor um, we want it to be the same height across and essentially what we want to do is use the main building as communal area so we'd have a kitchen we have a dining area we'll have um, a living space etc and then in the back we want to build bedrooms and en suites now the problem is my dad's house is about 57 years old you know that's that's old um, I'm, I'm almost there myself but 57 years old and like I said in the previous video it was not this high and what they've done is dug down to build the other houses so we don't know nobody's around nobody's around um, that would really know how this house was built how my dad's house was built um, obviously we've got Bobby um, in one of my previous videos I said that she she was in a pink sari she's the I'd say she's the oldest here so um, she may have some recollection but even she might not be here in, in the village but like I said she married my my oldest cousin who's no longer with us um, so yeah so he's going to draw up a couple of plans because he wanted to have this as the bedroom like have my dad's house as the bedrooms and then build en suites behind it because he said he doesn't want to dig too near the house because he's not sure how it was built and whether it might cause some damage to the house um, but I think my brother and I are adamant that we don't want a modern structure I just think it'll be so out of place and I don't think we'd be doing our dad or paying any kind of respect to our dad it's a bit weird because at the end of the day it's a building it's not our dad obviously um, but it's so important to us because our dad built this and um, I just think it would look personally I think it would look so much better if it was just a mirror image of the style um, of how our dad built this house um, because, because if we just add a modern block to the back of it it just feels like it's just an add-on even though we know it's an add-on everybody knows it's going to be an add-on I want it to just look seamless I want it to look uh, continuous like that and, and we don't want to modernize it to the extent to have glass I mean why do you want to have glass it becomes like a, um, a greenhouse when it gets warm so what what my dad house has got it's got wooden shutters and then behind the wooden shutters it's got metal metal bars a bit like these here but just vertical so we could get all those kind of replaced so they all look the same and things like that but I definitely want to stick to the kind of design principle of my dad's old house and continue that backwards um, so he, he said he's going to draw up a couple of plans and then you know me and my younger brother just have to um, speak to our siblings see see what what we can do um, and obviously we don't know about budget you know we've got absolutely no idea um, ha how much things cost here but obviously we've got family and relatives who can help us out so um, yeah this is going to be probably one of a few videos today because it's my last day um, on this trip um, like my last full day on this trip um, like I say after today we're, we're going to um, just go, and go back to my mother's side of the family and say our final goodbyes and then to select 
which is the capital of the Silet district. My brother's going to spend some time with his friends. I'm going to, I've got myself booked into a hotel and I really want to stay at this hotel because it's got a rooftop swimming pool and I just want to go and have a dip and I want to go and see the sunset off over Silet village. I thought I'd be able to see sunset here um, and I've done some time-lapse videos on my um, digital SLR but um, yesterday um, that all got interrupted by the architect going back and forth so I think I've got some time-lapse shots of him in it but it's so dense in terms of because we're on the hill it's so dense in terms of the tree line there's so many trees everywhere as you can see it's very very green very very peaceful you can hear the kind of distant car every now and again like it's just birds and trees just making noise and, and you've not got no idea what type of birds we, we saw a, quite a big bat last night at dusk um, and during dinner we saw a huge spider it was probably just smaller than my hand um, that obviously that's with slick